The flickering glow of candlelight danced against the worn, creaky walls of a shadowy tavern. Smoke curled lazily in the air, the smell of salt and sweat hanging thick in the room. In the far corner, obscured by the haze, sat Captain Red-Eye Rook, his gaze as sharp as the cutlass strapped to his hip. He was feared across the seas, his name spoken in whispers, for he never left a ship intact. Tonight, though, his usual scowl was softer, intrigued by the words of a stranger seated across from him. The stranger's voice was low, almost a hiss, as he spoke of a place forgotten by time, a cursed island shrouded in mist and dread. Black Reef Isle, the stranger breathed, eyes flicking nervously to the tavern door, as if the very name could summon horrors. They say it's where the treasure of Captain Mordrake lies buried, a fortune in gold and jewels, but none who seek it ever return. Rook leaned in, the firelight catching the crimson glint of his infamous red eye. Treasure, eh? What's the catch? Ghost ships, the stranger whispered. Doomed souls who tried to claim the riches, the island, it's cursed! Rook's lips curled into a wicked smile. Curses are for the weak, tell me where to find it. With the stranger's cryptic directions in hand, Rook stood, his boots heavy against the tavern floor. The room seemed to hush as he walked out, the scent of danger trailing behind him. He would gather his crew and set sail at dawn, for no curse could keep Captain Red-Eye Rook from claiming what was rightfully his. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, the Devil's Fortune rocked gently at the dock, its black sails casting ominous shadows across the water. Captain Rook, flanked by his loyal if not slightly deranged crew, stepped aboard. His first mate, a hulking figure named Thorn, eyed him warily. The crew's uneasy, Captain, Thorn rumbled. This talk of curses, some think it's bad luck to chase after ghost stories. Rook grunted, his hand tightening on the ship's wheel. Luck favors the bold thorn, and fortune, well, fortune's what I care about. With a sharp command, Rook barked orders, and the crew scrambled to their positions. The devil's fortune creaked and groaned as its sails caught the wind, and soon the ship was cutting through the still waters of the open sea. The fog began to thicken around them, swirling in like ghostly tendrils. The sun, once warm and golden, dimmed behind the growing clouds, leaving a pale, eerie light. The journey toward Black Reef Isle was unnervingly quiet. The usual chatter of the crew was replaced by tense silence, the only sounds being the soft lapping of water against the hull and the occasional creak of wood. Even the seabirds seemed to avoid the ship, as if sensing something unnatural about its course. As the hours dragged on, a sense of unease settled over the deck. Thorn approached Rook again, his brow furrowed. There's something wrong about this, Captain. The air feels thick, like something's watching us. Rook's eye glinted dangerously. Fear is how you get killed out here, Thorn. Focus on the prize. But even as he said it, Rook felt the weight of the island ahead, as though it were pulling them closer with unseen hands. The wind grew cold, biting at their skin, and the waters beneath the Devil's Fortune turned as still as glass, eerily reflecting the creeping fog around them. In the distance, the dark silhouette of Black Reef Isle emerged, barely visible through the swirling mist. The island loomed large and foreboding, its jagged rocks jutting out like the broken teeth of a beast, waiting to swallow them whole. Rook smirked at the sight. There it is, lads, the fortune of Captain Mordrake, riches beyond your wildest dreams. But as the ship inched closer to shore, the crew exchanged uneasy glances, and for the first time, doubt flickered in the captain's mind. The Devil's Fortune glided to a halt near the jagged shores of Black Reef Isle. 
the crew working in hushed efficiency as they dropped anchor. Mist curled along the shoreline, thickening like smoke, obscuring the edges of the island from view. The air was colder now, biting through the worn, salt-crusted clothes of the crew, causing them to shiver despite the calm sea. Rook was the first to step off the ship, his boots sinking into the wet sand with a dull squelch. His gaze swept across the twisted landscape before him, craggy rocks, skeletal trees, and a faint outline of cliffs barely visible through the swirling fog. The island seemed to breathe, an unspoken menace hanging heavy in the air. Thorn and the rest of the crew followed reluctantly, their faces pale beneath their beards and grime. Each man moved with caution, their hands instinctively resting on the hilts of their weapons. A superstitious murmur spread among them as they trudged forward. Captain, it doesn't feel right, one of the crew whispered, his voice trembling. This place, it's unnatural. Rook turned sharply, his red eye flashing. Shut your mouth or you'll be feeding the sharks, he snarled. There's treasure on this island, more than you've ever seen. We find it, we're rich beyond imagining. Nothing else matters. But despite his bravado, even Rook couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The island seemed alive, the mist curling unnaturally around them, clinging to their skin. The further they moved inland, the more oppressive the atmosphere became. Every snap of a twig, every rustle of the wind through the gnarled trees made the men flinch, their eyes darting around as if expecting the island to spring to life and devour them whole. As they pressed on, the faint sound of something eerie echoed through the fog, a low distant groan like the wail of a ghost carried on the wind. The men froze, looking to their captain for reassurance, but Rook simply gritted his teeth and pushed forward. We're close, he muttered more to himself than to anyone else. The treasure is here, I can feel it. Ahead, through the thickening mist, the entrance to a cave yawned before them, its dark mouth seemingly carved into the rocky cliffs by the hands of some ancient, forgotten force. Gold and jewels glittered faintly in the dim light, just inside the cavern's maw. There, Rook said, a greedy smile stretching across his face. We've found it. But, as they stepped closer to the treasure, the air around them grew colder still, and the feeling of being watched intensified. The crew hesitated, their eyes wide with fear, and then, from the shadows of the cave, a figure moved. The cave was wide, its walls glistening with moisture, and the air inside was thick and heavy. Captain Rook's heart pounded in his chest as the glitter of gold grew brighter the deeper they ventured. The ground was littered with coins, jeweled goblets, and crowns that sparkled with an unnatural light. It was a sight no man could resist, a fortune enough to turn any pirate into a king. The crew, wide-eyed and breathless, moved forward like moths to a flame, each man scrambling to fill his pockets with as much gold as he could carry. Thorn, however, hung back, his hand resting nervously on the hilt of his sword, his eyes scanning the cave with growing unease. Something ain't right, he muttered under his breath. It's too easy, but Rook was already kneeling before a chest, overflowing with riches. His hands running greedily through the coins, his red eye gleamed in the dim light, a wicked grin spreading across his face. Easy or not, it's ours now. Suddenly, the temperature in the cave dropped, the warmth of the gold replaced by a bone-chilling cold. A ghostly wind howled through the cave, sending shivers down the spines of the men. Thorn's eyes darted toward the entrance, his heart pounding. Captain, we need to leave. But Rook, entranced by the fortune, paid him no heed. Leave, we've just found it. The shadows on the walls seemed to shift, 
and from the darkness emerged a figure. At first, it was little more than a silhouette, but as it moved closer, its features became clear. Transparent skin stretched tightly over bones, a tattered pirate's coat hanging from skeletal shoulders, and eyes that burned with a cold, otherworldly light. It was the ghost of Captain Mordrake. Rook stood, backing away slightly, but refusing to let go of the treasure in his hands. What? What is this? More figures began to appear. Stepping out of the darkness, Mordrake's crew, their faces twisted in torment, their bodies half decayed, yet animated with a curse that bound them. The crew of the Devil's Fortune stumbled backward, fear etched into their faces as the ghosts advanced. Mordrake's voice echoed through the cave, hollow and full of malice. You've come to claim what's mine, he rasped. But this treasure is cursed, bound to the souls who sought it in greed. You will join us, Captain Rook. The crew of the Devil's Fortune panicked. Men dropped their plunder, fleeing toward the cave's entrance. But the mist outside had thickened, a spectral wall trapping them within. The ghostly crew closed in, their hollow eyes locked on the living, hungry for new souls to share in their eternal torment. Rook's heart raced as he looked around, his men falling into madness, fighting one another in their desperation to escape. His own greed had blinded him, but now the full weight of the curse bore down on him. Thorn, seeing no other option, grabbed Rook by the arm. Captain, we have to leave, now! But Rook, eyes fixed on the gold at his feet, shoved Thorn aside. No, this is mine! In that moment of betrayal, Thorn stumbled, his sword clattering to the ground as the ghost of Mordrake reached out, skeletal fingers brushing against Rook's skin. The captain gasped as an icy chill spread through his body. His flesh began to fade, becoming translucent, his form growing ghostly as the curse took hold. Rook's eyes widened in horror as he realized what was happening, but was too late. His body dissolved into mist, merging with the cursed spirits that roamed the island. The last thing he saw was Thorn, fleeing into the shadows as Rook became the newest captain of a ghostly crew, doomed to sail the Devil's Fortune into the fog for eternity. As the mist swirled around Captain Rook's fading form, the cave fell eerily silent. The ghostly crew of Captain Mordrake looked on with hollow, pitiless eyes, watching their new captain succumb to the curse. His once strong, commanding presence now wavered, becoming insubstantial, as if the very air had swallowed him whole. Rook tried to scream, but no sound came. His hands reached out, clawing at the disappearing world around him, but it was no use. His flesh dissolved, melting into the cold, spectral glow of the cursed treasure that had claimed so many before him. His last, fading thought was not of the gold or the fortune he had so desperately sought, but of the betrayal he had wrought upon his crew. The devil's fortune creaked in the distance, and the mist surrounding the island thickened, pulling Rook further into the realm of the damned. His body was no more, replaced by the hollow, lifeless form of the latest captain of the spectral ship. His soul, like those before him, now bound to sail the ghostly vessel for eternity. Above the cursed isle, the clouds churned violently as if the very sky reflected the doomed souls trapped below. The crew of the Devil's Fortune, scattered in panic, would never make it off the island. The mist closed in around them, and one by one, they too vanished into the shadows. Far from Black Reef Isle, sailors whispered of the cursed treasure, and the fate of those who sought it. They spoke of Captain Red Eye Rook, a pirate once feared by all who sailed the seas. 
now forever lost to the curse. Some swore they saw the devil's fortune in the distance on foggy nights, its spectral sails glowing faintly in the moonlight, its ghostly crew standing silent at their posts, and at the helm stood Captain Rook, his once fiery gaze now cold and empty, staring the ship into the mist, never to return. The legend of the Black Reef Isle and its cursed treasure continued to haunt the minds of those who dared to dream a fortune. But, no matter how many pirates chased after the ghostly riches, one thing remained the same. No one ever returned from Black Reef Isle.